Up to this point, you've watched me type into the command window and get results printed back there. This is fine for tinkering, but there's a better approach to work that you want to refer back to later or report to someone else, the Live Script Editor. MATLAB introduced Live Scripts in 2016. They're a kind of notebook interface, as you might be familiar with from the Jupyter project, for example. I would say they're still a work in progress right now, but they're still worth using in a lot of circumstances. So let me open up a new live script right now. Notice that there are two main areas. This one is for input, and the other is for output. Let me start putting in some code from the last video for finding roots of a quadratic polynomial. You may be surprised that there's no output yet. That's because when I use the Enter key in the Live Script Editor, it lets me start a new line of code without executing the current one. So instead of going one line at a time like in the command window, the Live Editor lets you put code into sections that you run as a block. I'll do that now by clicking on this bar over here. You can also use Control Enter or Command Enter to run the current section. Now I made a mistake in this little code block on purpose. I can now go back and correct it and then rerun the entire section. One of the nice things about live scripts is that you can mix together text with the code and the results. This ends up looking a lot nicer than using comments in the code to try to get the same effect. Let me add a little text here to explain what this code is trying to do. You can introduce mathematical formulas in the text blocks as well. Here I will do things in the style of LaTeX using dollar signs to enclose a simple formula. If you don't know LaTeX math syntax, it's worth learning just a little bit to use dollar signs like this. But you can also insert formulas using the menus. If you choose this option, a point-and-click style editor will open up for you. Right now, let me return to our script. I have a self-contained, correctly working block, so I'm going to start a new section. That way I won't have to rerun the first section every time unless I want to. I'm going to paste in content from the clipboard to keep things moving along. Now I'll run the new code. As an alternative to having outputs next to the relevant inputs, I can click this button and have them shown below the inputs instead. Now let me save the script. The native format for a script has file extension MLX. Notice I can also export the content to HTML or to PDF. Finally, let me address another aspect of saving your work, variable values. In the work that I've done here, the computations are trivial to recreate. But real-life practical computations might take a lot longer, and you might want to save your variable values so that you can reload and then continue to manipulate them in a later session. I'll go back to the command window for this. If I just type save and then a file name, all the variables in the workspace are saved to the current folder in a file with extension MAT. This is a binary file type that compresses the values to save disk space. If you want, you can name particular variables to save in the save command after the file name. Now I'll clear the variables and double click the MAT file, and you can see that all the variables have been reloaded. I get the same effect by typing load and then the file name, either in the command window or in a script. That's enough to know for now about saving your work. In the next video, I'm going to follow the lead of this numerical example we had and talk about complex numbers in MATLAB.